In this tutorial, we're going to go over all the settings in our new Spline Offset plugin, a modifier that creates multiple clones of splines with the option to incrementally increase or decrease offset, translation and rotation. We're going to take a look at the settings, starting at the top and simply working our way down, so no fancy examples in this one, we're just focusing on what all the buttons do. First of all, the number of parallels value simply specifies how many times the input spline is duplicated. Increasing this number adds more splines, and each one is incrementally offset using the spacing, rotation and translation values. So if we carry on moving down, the spacing settings control this incremental offset. It uses two parameters, distance which sets the offset distance between each parallel, and offset which allows you to add an additional value for just the first parallel. You can see more clearly the effects as I adjust this value, controlling the spacing between the clone splines and the original. Rotation is pretty self-explanatory, it incrementally rotates splines using the value set for the x, y and z axis. Rotation like translation takes place around the pivot point's position when the spline offset modifier was added. And so if you need to change the pivot point, the easiest way is to add an x form modifier and simply access and move the gizmo subobject. The spline offset modifier now uses this adjusted pivot point. So below this we have the translation settings which incrementally move the cloned splines using the values set for x, y and z axis. And there's nothing much more to say about that, that's pretty easy. To illustrate the next section though, we're going to add a multi subobject material to this which has five different colours, one for each of the first five material IDs. This little block of settings you see allows you to control the material IDs on the cloned splines using one of five options. The first of these is called Don't Change. Um, and it's the simplest, it simply retains the material IDs applied to the source spline. In this case it's material ID 1 which is white's red. Then we have fixed which sets a new value for the parallels. The new material ID is set using the input list at the bottom of the material ID D group UI. Note that although you can enter a comma se separated list here, for this setting only the first entry will be used. Uh, and then increment by increases the material ID on each parallel by the first value stored in this input list. So if we enter 1 for example, each clone uh, material ID increments from 1 starting with whatever was set on the source spline. If you set it to 2, it's going to go uh, jump 2 each time, so it would go 1, 3, 5. If it went 3, it would go 1, 4 and so on and so on. Moving on down we have sequence by segment which allows you to create a pattern of material IDs using a comma separated list. The material then loops through this, moving to the next material ID in the sequence for each spline segment. And then closely related to this you've got sequence by spline. It also allows you to create a pattern of material IDs using a comma separated list, but this time the modifier loops through these moving to the next material ID in the sequence but for each parallel so radiating in this case out from the centre. After the material settings, we've got the mode switch. There are in fact two algorithms in this modifier that perform offset and healing operations. We've called them 2D mode and 3D mode and you'll see why in a minute. We're going to look at the 2D algorithm first because it provides the most robust healing solution and has two additional options to define how the parallels are created by setting bevel and end type. It also has the ability to auto heal splines that are being generated by different subsplines, which the 3D mode doesn't have. You should be aware though that although it does have more features, the major limitation of the 2D algorithm is that it will, that it will always flatten all splines on the Z axis before performing any further translation, rotation or offset operations. So 2D mode as we mentioned has options to control the way the ends of the spline are terminated. And to see how that works, let's switch this to an open spline to make it clearer. So the first two, which are called closed polygon and closed line, to all intents and purposes yield the same results here. However, much more useful for open splines are open butt, which causes the ends to terminate flush with the end of the source spline, open square, which offsets the end the same distance as the sides, and open circle, which adds a well circular end section. There are also three types of bevel to choose from for external intermediary corners. You can have square, you can have circle, or mitre. Now let's switch back to the closed shape and take a closer look at the closed line and polygon options because there are actually a couple of small differences when using these with heel intersecting spline and double sided. First of all, 
The heal intersecting splines option allows intersecting parallels from different subsplines to be auto healed. When it's disabled, parallels from different subsplines are not healed and they simply overlap like you can see here. When it's enabled, parallels of the same number from the different subsplines are healed where they touch. This works with all the modes actually, but in closed line mode the parallels can't have separate islands. Only complete loops are allowed. In closed poly mode however, separate islands are still retained. Also of note here though, closed polygon doesn't support double sided offsets, but closed line mode does. And between these two settings you should be able to get to more or less any combination you need to achieve the results you're after. On this simpler example we can just see and clarify what double sided offset actually does. When it's enabled splines are created inside and outside of the source spline, but when it's disabled splines are only on one side of the source spline. And if you use a positive number it will be outside and a negative number it could be inside. And that's more or less it for the options that are specific to the 2D mode. But there's also the 3D mode which lacks bevel type and end type features and has a less robust auto healing algorithm and also doesn't heal subsplines. But Unlike 2D mode, it will retain the spline's position on the Z axis. Okay, so keep moving down the interface, we come to a setting called New Vertex Type. This sets the type used when new vertices are created, particularly you'll see these on curved splines. This setting can be used with the conditional nodes and or um, corner settings in Rail Clone to help differentiate the original vertices on the source spline from the ones added by the spline offset modifier. For example, to illustrate, here I have a rail clone style which just is set to add a teapot on all vertices of the type Bezier corner. The original spline has Bezier corner vertices, four of them, and the clone spline creates a curve by adding several additional Bezier corner vertices. And you can see now there are tons of teapots on the clone splines which I don't want. So what I can do is I can choose instead to make these additional newly created vertices Beziers retaining Bezier corner just for the originals. That way I can target the same parts of the spline with rail clone and all the offset parallels as well. And though this example is using rail clone to illustrate it of course has many other uses. Okay so we're nearly there. Next we'll look at the keep original spline button. This is a simple one. When it's enabled the source spline is retained. When it's disabled the source spline is removed. And finally we look at apply backwards. When this is enabled, translation and rotation operations are performed backwards, i.e. from the last parallel to the first. And when it's disabled, which is the default, translation and rotation operations are performed in the order from the first parallel to the last. And that pretty much covers all the settings. R remember this new modifier is completely free, so go ahead and download it from our free plugins page. In future tutorials, we'll look at some practical uses for this plugin, as well as how it can be combined with Forest Pack and Rail Clone to unlock some really interesting techniques. Thank you.